Hey guys, let's discuss current affairs. Uh, in the first edition of these two video uh, sessions per week, of course, he will have a look at the first of the, you know, 22 or 25 questions in this video talk. Uh, which country successfully test launched Sarmat, uh, which is an ICBM, Intercontinent Ballistic Missile, that has the highest tactical and technical characteristics and is able to overcome all modern means of anti-missile defense now before we discuss this i'll tell you a few things here i c b m is intercontinental ballistic missile now this now the range is such that it can touch another continent hit a target in another continent now you look at this miss mis mis mit mes all mean send so you have a messenger you have a missile you have a transmission you transmit so everywhere it means send okay i just wanted to bring that in so um just a second clear this you have this missile that has been launched by russia russia that's how you pronounce it rush and r two sounds so what is this missile about? This is the, considered the world's most advanced missile. So I want you to write a few things about this missile because often in the exams they ask this question like which of the following statements is incorrect or which of the following statements are right about, you know, about Sarmat missile are right. So you need to know two, three things about the missile to be able to pick what's right or sometimes pick all uh, for in all of the above are right. Yeah, or if nothing, you know what's right, but not, none of the choices there, you could always pick none of the above. But for that, you need knowledge, you need awareness, you need, you know, you need to have, you know, uh, that basic information about this particular missile. So please write Sarmat, Sarmat, S A R M E T. Underline that first point. Super heavy ICBM. Super heavy. ICBM, that's a category. Intercontinental Ballistic Missile. Next. Nicknamed Saturn II by the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. Saturn II. So Saturn is Raksh, you know, Shaitan. Okay. Then, right, next point. Range 18,000 kilometers. 18K, K is kilo, kilo is thousand. Next, speed 20.7 mark. One mark equals speed of sound speed of sound so guys when we say 20.7 mark you go by the speed of sound you would find that the speed of this missile is 25,500 kilometers per hour that's a speed that's a lightning fast 25,000 kilometers per second so even if you don't remember want to remember 25,531 is the exact number but you remember 25,000 okay so 25,000 kilometers is the range of this missile now I want you to take it further and you will find that um, you know 25,000 kilometers per second would be about 7 kilometers per sorry 25,000 kilometers per hour would be about 7 kilometers per second so in one second it can travel 7 kilometers that's the speed next you could write can carry can carry 10 to 15 10 to 15 10 to 15 hypersonic missiles hypersonic missiles hypersonic missiles hmm. and you know all of these missiles can hit different targets not one target here there here in all sides and they can move unexpectedly you know through remote control operations they can move 
unexpectedly. I mean, in directions that are not programmed in the past, but could be changed as they move, as the missiles fly. Amazing stuff, my friends. No country in the world has a missile like this. No country. Yeah. That's why, you know, Vladimir Putin, the Russian president, has warned the West that this is a missile unlike anything in the world. The West does not have anything like this. And this is the kind of missile that would make our enemies think twice before attacking Russia. Okay, so. Now this is one of those six super weapons. You could write this. One of six super weapons. One of six super weapons. Announced by, announced by Vladimir Putin, Vladimir Putin, below that, right, one, so we are going to write the names of all the six weapons, six super weapons, one, avant-garde, avant-garde, hypersonic missile system, hypersonic Glide vehicle, glide vehicle. See, when you pronounce this word, it is H that's silent, means it's vehicle, not vehicle. H, no, it's vehicle. Okay, so I'll tell you what's right. Use it where it's understood, it's a very simple thing. So one of the super miss, super weapons promised by Vladimir Putin is avant-garde hypersonic, you know, glide vehicle. Two, Poseidon. Poseidon, nuclear powered, nuclear armed, nuclear armed, A-R-M-E-D. Underwater, underwater, Unmanned, I'll write it here, unmanned vehicle, Poseidon, nuclear armed, underwater, unarmed vehicle. So it was spy while in the ocean. Okay. Number three, right, number three. Number three. Burevestnik. Burevestnik nuke powered missile nuke powered nuke is nuclear powered missile hmm the last two are supersonic uh, hypersonic sorry four so sorry guys okay let's put it this way okay I N Z A Z H A L. Okay. Kinjal air launched hypersonic missile. Kinjal air launched hypersonic missile. So it could be launched from a fighter aircraft. Number five. Sarkong. Ship based, ship based hypersonic missile or ship based means ship launch, it's launched from a ship, so it's called ship launched. Next, number six, Sarmat, Sarmat intercontinental ballistic missile, Sarmat intercontinental ballistic missile. It's mentioned in the question. Hmm. The Russians are a major nuclear power. The Americans are very, the US, the United States, that is, um, then the European Union, then you have Canada. Yeah, they're all worried about the rise of Russia. 
So this is something that they have been budgeting for that is by developing certain kinds of weapons that could take on, take on our enemies. Okay. So this is something I wanted to tell you. Uh, just to bring in something, Russian Prime Minister is a guy called Mikhail Mishustin. Mikhail Mishustin. Okay. So plenty of stuff there. What the choices? What else can what can you write about the choices? Just to bring in a couple of things, uh, North Korea maybe one con one country. North Korea's um, capital is Pyongyang. Oh, it has all kinds of missiles. Pyongyang. Its missiles can reach uh, almost the entire west coast of US plus some parts of east coast. So it can touch all parts of the world. And the leader, they don't have a president's post. It's the leader is Kim Jong Un. Kim Jong Un. That's the current leader of North Korea. The currency of North Korea is won. What is it? Won. The South Korea is South Korean won. North Korea is North Korean won. Okay. Very dangerous country. Don't go here. With which company has crypto lender Nexo teamed up to launch the world's first crypto backed payment card? Hmm, what is this Nexo? You could write one line. You could write one line. Crypto backed. Crypto backed. Credit line. Crypto backed credit line. Let's say you have a crypto account, you buy crypto, you know, currency. Now the value of the cryptocurrency could go up, but suddenly you find yourself without cash, hard cash. There is no cash in the pocket. So if you have this card called Nexo, okay, Nexo and MasterCard have come together to form to launch this card. This card will operate like any other credit card. Okay, any other credit card. You need to understand something here that usually credit cards don't carry any rate of interest if you pay on time within time. It's a kind of an unsecured loan that is if there is a bank, let's say I have, um, let me pull out this particular card. Hmm? Um, let's say there is this American Express card. Okay, now I I know I have this card and uh, this card can help me buy sell stuff especially buy stuff even if I don't have paisa in my pocket I can use this bank's paisa to you know make my purchases it has limit that runs into lakhs of rupees there's something called a credit limit so if you're given a credit limit of let's say 10 lakh you can spend 10 lakh rupees on this card the best part is there is no security that is, you don't have to put any collateral security to use a credit to, to, to use and spend the, you know, the limit on the credit card. You got it? Now, usually you don't have any kind of security for a credit card loan. But as far as Nexo is concerned, it has, it says 90% of the Bitcoin value of any current or any cryptocurrency value can be used as you know some kind of can be used can it can be used to make payments on this card so you have this card let's say i have this card it's called what is it um, you know crypto backed payment card credit card i have this so i want to spend some 7 lakh rupees I, in my pocket there is no paisa there is no paisa if i have this card i can use this to to make purchases why is this important see if you have credit cryptocurrency cryptocurrency is a very dicey thing in india it's not approved by the government of india and the rpi let's say you do have a credit card and you do have a cryptocurrency a eh? cryptocurrency then 90 percent of the value of the cryptocurrency can be used to make purchases on this card yes 90 percent 
So if the value of your cryptocurrency is let's say 10 lakh rupees, up to 90% of this money can be used for, you know, this kind of payment, you know, crypto back payments card. Absolutely good stuff. Yeah. But many people don't know how to use credit card. I told you in the past that credit cards are a very dangerous thing. If you don't know how to use them, I mean, you could get sucked into the whirlpool, quagmire. You know, once you go in, it will be very difficult to come out of it. Hmm? So MasterCard and Nexo have launched this um, crypto back you know, currency. What about the choices here? Um, so we can take the names of the CEOs of all the companies, right? MasterCard. Michael Mibak. Michael Mibak. Okay. Michael Mibak. Visa. Oh, great. There are plenty of them. Actually. Visa. Alfred Kelly. Alfred Kelly. Cred Kunal Shah. Kunal Shah. PayPal. You know, one of the co founders of PayPal was Elon Musk, the Tesla SpaceX guy, now Twitter guy. PayPal run by Dan Shulman. American Express. This is a card that is usually not given to everyone. Yeah? Because see, Visa and what is that? Um, Visa and MasterCard are card issuing companies. You don't need to have an account with any bank to be issued a card by Visa or MasterCard. But there is something here. American Express is a company that issues own cards. It's a bank that issues own credit card. Now, if you want to know the CEO of, uh, what is that, um, MX, uh, it's called MX. It is Stephen Squarey. Stephen Squarey. Stephen Squarey. Okay. Which central government scheme has been selected for the Prime Minister's Award for Excellence in Public Administration 2020 under the category of Innovation General Central? Um, Udan. Uday Deshka Am Nagrik. I want you to write a couple of things about this particular scheme. They could come in the exam. So please write Udan. Udan. Uday Deshka Am Nagrik. Here flies the common man of India. Hmm? So, then you write, underline that first point. To improve connectivity, to improve connectivity, to improve connectivity, to remote, to remote and regional areas, to remote and regional areas. Hmm. What regional area? Yeah. Remote and you know what to say? Regional areas. Next, um, fifty percent of seats. Fifty percent of seats are reserved. Fifty percent in Udan flights are reserved and sold at subsidized rates. Sold and sold and sold at subsidized rates. Full stop. Next point. Airline companies, airline companies are are provided are provided certain amount of VGF, which is viability gap funding. Wow. 
viability gap i'm so sorry what did i write founding <laughs> oh boy oh boy that's some weird thing i wrote hmm viability gap funding so right dash continue there dash an amount shared by an amount shared by shared between the central and state governments the amount an amount shared between the central and state governments next price prices on most routes are fixed prices on most routes are fixed are fixed so next next how much is the price can you guess see the first one hour flight it's if it's a one hour flight the price is fixed at 2500 rupees 2500 rupees if you are traveling from point b to point a to point b and the distance is about 45 minutes you will not pay more than 2500 rupees per ticket that's a rule okay see today if you travel by taxi it will cost you 10 rupees per kilometer here 500 km let's say the first 500 kilometers you know is um, 2500 rupees so how much does it come to 5, five rupees so flying is cheaper than taking a taxi yeah <laughs> next airports airports offer uh, airports offer airports offer free landing take off and bay facilities and bay facilities what's a bay see there's a airport okay let's say there is an airport here this is a runway the flight comes in okay this is the main runway from when the flight from mo moves from here to this this is called taxiway. It's called taxiway. So there's a terminal here. Terminal you have aero bridges. Hmm? These are called base. One, two, three, four base. Away from the bases, you would find you would find certain places where airports are uh, airplanes are parked. These are called remote base. Remote base. So when an indigo flight comes in and stops here, uses an aero bridge, let's say it pays, you know, 100 rupees. I'm just giving an example. But you know, if it parks itself here, it would pay about, you know, 50 rupees or let's say 60 rupees. So it has to pay more to use aero bridge and other facilities. For other things, they usually use remote base. Yeah. So this would lowers cost. See, only flights to big cities, uh, you know, use aero bridges and all that. Otherwise, it's all like, chalo bus mein baito, sit in the bus, we will take you there to the aircraft. Okay. So, under Udan scheme, government provides, airports have said, okay, we will not charge you any paisa. So, this cuts the cost. By cutting the cost, what happens is that the flight, you know, has, let's say, 100 seats, 50% are reserved uh, and offered at subsidized rates. Low rates, fifty percent. The airline company can sell at market prices. It's wish basically. Last point. Airports of also offer. Airports also offer free security. Free security. Free security. Comma, electricity, electricity, and fire fighting facilities. Fire fighting facilities. Hmm? Got it. See, this scheme was launched in 2016, 2016. The idea behind the scheme was to convert remote places. The problem with 
India is it's a very large country with no connectivity, no proper connectivity. We have train systems, but trains are awfully slow in India. What we call a far an express, a super fast train, you know, of course, super fast would have a speed of an average speed of 70 kmph. Express about 50 kmph, 55 kmph. That's bad, no? Isn't it? So what happens is that it takes a long time. Now, by having this Udan scheme in place, the government is trying to bring connectivity to remote places. What happens when this ha you know connectivity, such connectivity is established? One, people can move freely. At the same time, if it's a tourist place, now tourists go to that place. They can go directly from, let's say, Hyderabad. There is a place called Kannul. It's pretty close to about 200 kilometers. But if there's a flight, yeah, you know, it becomes that much easier for people to fly from, let's say, uh, if there's a flight from Delhi to Kannul, from Delhi to Kannul, the people can directly fly instead of coming to Hyderabad and then take a taxi. So what is happening here? It cuts cost. It cuts cost and time taken. At the same time, you know, more people come to that place. Earlier, because of the remoteness of the place, uh, the, 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 you know, the difficulty of accessing that place, it would become tough. For, it would be like you know, discouraging for a lot of tourists to go to that place near Karnul. Now, that's not the case. People can directly find, yeah. This, see, this is what when tourists, now tourists come in. If it's a business place, so let's say you are a producer of raw material, you are a producer of raw material, you, are, you produce it in X town somewhere in Bihar, small town in Bihar. But your market is in, let's say in um, Bhopal or it's in somewhere near Delhi. So to, to, to move your goods from that place in interior Bihar to this place would be time consuming. But if flights are, cargo flights and all these are available, it becomes that much easier for you to move from the interior town in Bihar to, you know, Bhopal. So this connectivity helps businesses also. People say time is money, time is money. So people can move faster. At the same time, tourists can come in, plus all the associated things with tourists and business is money. All the money moves between places. Today, you wouldn't believe we have hundred more than 100 airports in India. Till recently, we had about 55 or 60 airports. Now we have 100, over 100 airports because we have been able to connect remote places with this. See, there is a place near Ajmer called Kishangad. Now, a lot of people from Hyderabad go to Ajmer. Why? Because in Ajmer, there is a Dargah. For Hindus, there is Pushkar Mandir. You got it? So, a lot of people travel for this to this religious place. So, you have Kishangar, which is about 45 kilometers from Ajmer. So, you, you, can, you have a direct flight from a place like Hyderabad to Kishangar. Unheard of place. So, this kind of scheme has helped a great deal, my friends. Yeah. And because the airlines spend a lot of money, the government says, okay, you have your incurring losses. We'll ensure that you don't incur losses because you are uh, offering 50% of the seats at subsidized rate, low rates. We will provide you with funding also, the viability gap funding. So it's not viable, not profitable to fly from point A to point B. No problem. The defense will pay you. It's good. Yeah, It's a win-win for everyone. The aeroplane gets connectivity places got connected, people can move freely move about and um, if there is a direct flight between let's say Karnul and Vijav and Hyderabad, Karnul and uh, Delhi, tariff goes down. Otherwise you have to come say you have to move between points. See if I, I, I recently traveled to a place somewhere in northeast India. Okay. Point let's call it point A. So I had to go to Calcutta point B from here Hyderabad point H. Hyderabad to Calcutta and from there I had to take another flight. So if there is a direct flight to this, you know, it will, the time taken will come, let's say it will be a two hour flight. Now it was a five hour flight for me because I had to stop, change plane, get into plane. Okay. So in five hours, the same time here now I would have gone in two hours and the tariff would have been, let's say something like, let's say 5,000 rupees. Okay. Here I paid something like 8,000 rupees. Because I have to use this airport, then the flight takes off from this 
and there are user development charges at airports and everything oh everything D two different flights means gst for uh, both flights yeah so it's good actually these kind of schemes are damn good yeah this have helped a lot hmm? so ude desh ka aam nagrik so from here you could look at daksh you look at daksh i think we discussed in the previous class you could write this dakshata dakshata or dakshata or kushalta kushalta sampann sampann hitgrahi hitgrahi h i t g r a h i hitgrahi you can write in hindi if you want hmm which indian bank has been awarded the global selent model bank award under the category payment systems transformation for building a best in class er h er h is sorry e p h is enterprise payments hub indus ind bank you know what this indus ind bank is owned by hinduja group hinduja group this is owned by this group is owned by four brothers the hinduja brothers sri chand gopichand prakash and ashok they moved from india to iran from iran they moved to switzerland in 1979 they moved to switzerland today they are from they are they, they are based in switzerland and uk in both the countries they are the richest people mm. and they are complete vegetarians and tea totalers no alcohol nothing it's a huge group and if you want to know more about it i can tell you ashok leyland is owned by them you know ashok leyland india's second largest commercial vehicle maker ashok leyland it owns gulf oil you know gulf oil it owns this brand it owns a lot of other things as well hmm the ceo of indus ind bank is sumant katpalia sumant katpalia okay yes bank prashant kumar yes bank prasa prashant kumar prashant kumar hdfc bank recently announced a merger with hdfc parent company uh, its parent company uh, the ceo is sashidhar jagdishan sashidhar jagdishan next icic bank is sandeep bakshi sandeep bakshi next axis bank axis bank recently purchased uh, consumer and retail business of city bank which is an american bank axis bank uh, is run by amitabh choudhury amitabh choudhury yeah i read this story this is uh, not story this tragic thing i read about this tragic thing there was this 18 year old national table tennis player my friends uh, dina dayalan vishwa he was in tamil nadu he was there in he was traveling from guwahati to shillong along with three of his you know sport mates unfortunately the vehicle ran into a you know a commercial vehicle truck some kind of thing and this guy and you know suffered much serious injuries than the rest unfortunately he passed away in the accident just 18 year old it's always a sad thing to see yeah uh, by the way um, i suggest that today just for fun you learn something more called ping pong diplomacy this is one of my favorite areas in international politics ping pong is other word for table tennis because of the song ping pong okay so what is ping pong diplomacy please learn about it write it somewhere you know what i do when i so there is a blank paper okay 
if i want to learn something now i write like this ping pong circle it like this and then drag arrows that's the best thing to do okay try this it works wonderfully well hmm According to a working paper released by the World Bank, po World Bank Policy Research, extreme poverty rate in India fell from 22.5% uh, or 22.5% to dash percent in India. Okay, um, pre-COVID it fell to 20, sorry, 10.2%. That's a huge drop overall. You know, drop. You know, overall India that is both ex uh, rural and urban areas it dropped drastically. How do you measure extreme poverty? 1.9 dollars per day so if i don't let's say i'm a poor guy uh, uh, i am poor guy <laughs> um, 1.9 dollars per day if i don't make if i don't earn even 1.9 dollars per day i would be set to be you know i would be living in extreme poverty as per this definition okay um, 1.9 dollars is close to 145 rupees my friends you could say 140 rupees hmm. so if I don't earn even 140 rupees per day I am in extreme poverty now I want to take this further how much has for poverty fallen you could write this two things yeah you could write uh, then now so then if you want 2011 2019 okay uh, right at the top poverty rates poverty rates rural areas urban areas hmm? then was See, you know, currently it is 11.6%. Um, 11.6%. 11 and this is 6.3%. So 6.3% of people in urban areas do not earn even, you could say, $2 per day. Take around $2 per day. That's extreme poverty. Think about people who live in relative poverty. Oh, this is a huge chunk of people who live in relative poverty. Yeah. Very few people in India make money. It is true. Very few people live comfortably. Very few people eat three meals a day. Nutritious meals. Most people don't eat well. Because of lack of access to money, resources. Okay, now this in rural areas has dropped to by you know it is dropped to 11.6 percent. What was the drop? You could write. In fact, the drop has was 14.7 percent. So it is actually how much was it? It was something like 26.3 percent. Can you believe that? So it has dropped by 14.7 percent in eight years. Extreme poverty in rural areas has dropped because of improved uh, access to subsidized food grains, improved access of uh, to to you know uh, Aadhaar based dissemination of uh, food and everything else, food grains and all that. At the same time, urban areas it is now 6.3 percent. It dropped by 7.9 percent. So how much is this? This is this comes to 14.2 percent. So it has dropped by this much got it so guys it were it used to be 26.3 percent in 2011 now it is 11.6 percent of course the numbers would have only gone up because of the you know uh, covid thing a lot of people lost employment millions of people in rural areas lost employment of course the government did its job by providing food grains free of cost not even subsidized price free of cost at the and uh, it is also true that in rural areas um, the government provided employment through MG, uh, Mahatma Gandhi National Rural Employment Guarantee Act. Um, urban areas things have changed uh, but not as fast as they change in 
rural areas you see the drop in urban areas 7.9 percent in rural areas the drop has been a massive 15 percent down figure 15 percent okay uh, kamlesh nilakant vyas was recently granted an extension of one year as chairperson of the atomic energy commission Atomic Energy Commission is a part of the Department of Space, Government of India. What is that? Department of Space. You could write this, Department of Space. And the direct, the main minister for the Department of Space is the Prime Minister of India because the Department of Space comes directly into the Prime Minister of India. Okay? Under the, you know, Prime Minister of India. So, I am just writing a little more clarity for me later so um, what about this first one you could write this in space in short national indian national promotion and uh, space promotion and authorization center hmm? write that dash regulator of space activities in india Regulator of space activities in India. Next. Indian Space Research Organization. Look at choice three. Nash. Chairperson. Chairperson. Somanath. Okay, uh, I'll give you the full name by just write short form. Um, Sridhara Panikkar or Panikkar Somanath Somanath Sridhara Panikkar Somanath That's the chairperson of ISRO. Okay. Vikram Sarabhai Space Center. Where is it? It's in Trivandrum. It's in Trivandrum. Or what do you call Tiruvananthapuram. Tiruvananthapuram. This is India's second rocket launch center. Okay. Second. Vikram Sarabhai, ladies and gentlemen, is called the father of India's space program. Father of India's space program. He is the person responsible for laying the foundations of ISRO. What later became ISRO. Okay. Center for Cellular and Molecular Biology. Biology is in my city Hyderabad okay. hmm. Manoj Pandey is the new chief of the Indian Army who is the outgoing chief the outgoing chief in brackets I am writing is was Manoj Mukund Manoj Mukund Naravani. Manoj Mukund Naravani. Okay. Indian Air Force. Vivek Ram Chaudhary. Vivek Ram Chaudhary. Indian Navy. R. Harikumar, Radha Krishan Harikumar, National Security Guard, NSG, M. A. Ganapati, M. A. Ganapati, Indian Coast Guard, V. S. Pathania
वी एस पथानिया The World Heritage Day, observed on the 18th April, is aimed at spreading awareness of the importance of protecting and preserving various sites around the world that have achieved World Heritage status. This year's theme is okay. That theme is already mentioned. Can we look at some days in April? Important days in April. Hmm. Please write. Ah, uh, we'll take this after 20th. After 20th April. Okay. Write this. April 21st. April 21st April 21st National Civil Services Day National Civil Services Day Next April 22nd April 22nd Earth Day, E A R T H. Earth Day, E A R T H. Earth Day. Next. Twenty third, not much. Twenty fourth. National Panchayati Raj Day. National Panchayati Raj Day. Twenty fifth, twenty fifth April, World Malaria Day. Yeah, World Malaria Day, Malaria Day. M A L A R I A, Mal. This is how you read it. Mal, area, area is air. Mal is bad, bad air. It was believed that it spread through bad air. It actually spreads through. The bite of a phenom, an infected female anopheles mosquito. Hmm. So anyway, um, we were discussing twenty fifth April, na? Huh? Yes, twenty fifth April, twenty sixth April. World Intellectual Property Rights Day. World Intellectual Property Rights Day. Intellectual Property Rights Day. Next, last one. April thirtieth. April thirtieth. World Veterinary Day. Veterinary Day. Yeah. One to one finance is India's first. Financial technology or fintech-led non-banking finance company factor to receive the certificate of registration under the RBI's revised registration of factors regulations. One-to-one -one finance is based in. Okay, it's mentioned there. I want you to write this. Right, the word factoring. What does factoring mean? Factoring. Factoring dash offering short term loans earlier short term loans were given to large scale companies large capital companies now this NBFC will do something different short term loans to MSMEs MSMEs. Which is micro, small, and medium enterprises. Micro, small, and medium enterprises without without collaterals security collateral collaterals. So, to repeat, factoring is about uh, offering uh, short-term loans to MSMEs without collaterals. Hmm? Just to bring in something extra, Ahmedabad is home to physical research laboratory. 
PRL, Physical Research Laboratory, Jaipur, of course, it's already mentioned here, Chennai, Central Leather Research Institute, Central Leather Research Institute, Pune, let me clear this, my friends. National Film Archive of India. Archive of India. Okay. Hmm. Hyderabad. We saw CCMB a while ago. Now you can add the Indian Institute of Chemical Technology. The Indian Institute of Chemical Technology. This is a question about which I can add almost nothing. Prafulla Kar, who passed away recently, was a noted Odia music director and writer. I couldn't find much information about him. See, I don't really understand Odia work and everything. But he received a Padma Shri for his work. Hmm? So. India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi recently inaugurated a community radio station named Dudwani dedicated to animal husbandry in Gujarat. Animal husbandry is about livestock, rearing livestock. Livestock is very important because livestock provides, you know, meat, it provides milk, it provides cheese, dairy and related products yeah it provides um hide tan skin and all that it provides um you know um when you say tan it is tannery which is for leather industry and leather related products yeah um x plenty of stuff my friends all that stuff comes from animals okay all the stuff that comes from animals comes through animal husbandry and india is home to one of the it is home to the largest milk producing. See, we are the largest producer of milk. India is the largest producer of milk. Please know that. Largest producer of milk. But within milk, there are types. Camel milk, goat milk, you know, buffalo milk, cow milk and all that. But overall, we are world leader. And who is responsible for the milk revolution in India? The milk revolution in India you know also called operation flood aka also known as operation flood was is, has been possible because of two persons one you have heard of Vergis Kurian Vergis Kurian the second is Tribhuvan Das Patel find out about this person Tribhuvan Das Patel Tribhuvan Das Patel Okay These two are called the fathers of India's milk revolution At one point in the 1950s, 60s we used to import milk powder to nourish our children I mean things were pretty bad my friends So later this was one thing that pushed government of India to invest in additional capacities and that is where Tribhuvan Das Patel launched the cooperative movement, dairy movement in Gujarat and later Varghese Korean took over that movement. Okay, These two guys together laid the foundations of the dairy movement in India and today India from a net importer of milk powder and everything is a net exporter of stuff, such stuff. We are a net surplus country. Yeah. So, the central government has recently amended the Foreign Exchange Management Act rules to allow dash FDI in LIC, 20% FDI. See, foreign direct investment, maybe in the next class we'll focus on foreign direct investment. What is it and all that? Well, spend less time now. Foreign direct investment means where foreigners can come and invest in the Indian economy uh, to set up a bench, uh, business either through a joint venture or through a wholly owned subsidiary. 
So they have amended this FEMA and said that um, up to 20% of the capital can be provided by a foreign company in LIC. So a foreign company can own 20% of the shares, which means 20% of the capital will be owned by the foreign company. Okay. So this is a very good thing actually because we need money. The more the more merrier. Country needs money, country needs foreign exchange. Hmm? I'll discuss FDA in the next class. Maybe if not, no, next the class after because I plan to discuss Israel and Palestine in two classes. Today I laid the foundation. In the next class I'll take it further on that. Okay. LIC is coming out with an IPO and its chairperson is Mangalam Ramasubramanyam Kumar. Mangalam Ramasubramanyam Kumar. Chairperson Mangalam Ramasubramanyam Kumar. Yeah. Who of the following persons has recently won the 2022 La Roda International Chess Championship held in, uh, what is it place, um, Castile. Held in Castile, La Mancha. Spain. Okay, right, right. This tournament was won by Dhammaraju Gukesh, choice one. Dhammaraju Gukesh. Number two in the second place was that guy, you know, Martiosan from Armenia. In the third place were tied two place, two guys, Ramesh Babu Pragnananda and uh, or Prajnananda and Ronak Sadwani. Okay, don't worry, the winner is important. Dhammaraju Gukesh. Which country hosted the International Water Week Water Convention 2022? Singapore. This is Singapore. You see this? At the tip of the Malaysian Peninsula, you find the star mark that is Singapore. Tiny country, tiny. About 700 plus square kilometers. And uh, about 25% of the country's land is reclaimed. Earlier was sea, you know, was taken back from sea, turned into land. Mm. Singapore's capital is Singapore city. I'll just focus on the leaders of these countries. Um, Prime Minister is Lee. Xi'an Lung Li Xi'an Lung Li Xi'an Lung Okay mm. Malaysia's Prime Minister is Yaqub Ismail Sabri But you write this enough Thailand's Prime Minister is Prayuth, you can also say Pradyuth. Prayuth Chan O Cha. Hmm? Australia, Scott Morrison. Okay, enough. Hmm. Which bank recently unveiled a 500 million, recently, recently raised 500 million dollars through its uh, IFSC gift city branch? Gift is Gujarat International Finance Tech City branch, State Bank of India raised it. And um, you know, this is in Gandhinagar, this is in Gandhinagar, you could write this, Gandhinagar, Gujarat. State Bank of India, who's the guy? Uran State Bank of India, Dinesh Khara. India's largest bank is run by Dinesh Khara. IDBI Bank, Rakesh Sharma. Rakesh Sharma. Axis Bank, Amitabh Chaudhary. We mentioned this a while ago. Sidbi, Small Industries Development Bank of India. Uh, what is it? Siva. Ra Shiva Subramanyam Raman Shiva Subramanyam Raman This is two ends here Nabad National Bank for Agriculture and Rural Development is run by Chintala 
గోవిందరాజులు చింతల గోవిందరాజులు చింతల గోవిందరాజులు ఇవాన్స్ షెబెట్ రీసెంట్లీ వన్ ద ట్వంటీ ట్వంటీ టూ బాస్టన్ మ్యారథన్ హీఈస్ ఫ్రమ్ కెన్యా కెన్యా సో గైస్ దిస్ ఈస్ కెన్యా Hmm? The capital is mentioned here, so I can just give you the name of the leader of this country. Kenya's leader is, president is, what's his name here? Yeah? Uhuru Kenyatta. They will never ask you this question because Kenya is mentioned here. Yeah? <laughs> Ethiopia, this is Ethiopia, pretty large country. Yeah? The oldest Christian country in the world. said to be the old second oldest christian country in the world ethiopia um it is run by abi ahmed ali prime minister abi ahmed ali winner of the 2019 nobel peace prize peace prize somalia mohammed abdullahi mohammed that's his name Muhammad Abdullahi Muhammad Democratic Republic of Congo this is the second largest country in Africa this one hmm? this is the capital Kinshasa the president is Felix Shishikedi Shishikedi Felix Shishikedi Sudan oh this is Sudan there is no particular guy who runs sudan now there is an interim military council so let's skip it hmm? yeah. this ladies and gentlemen is somalia and the coastline of somalia is the longest in africa so the country with the longest coastline is somalia longest coastline in africa is somalia okay Al-Aqsa Mosque in news recently is the most sensitive site in the Israel-Palestine conflict. Okay, is Al-Aqsa Mosque. This is the mosque. See, I'll take you here. Okay, a bit now, a lot more in the next class. If you look at this this is in west asia this is in west asia you see this region here this is the map you see this you see this particular part that's it hmm? lebanon syria jordan egypt this is a mediterranean sea a lot of people who debate with you you know palestinians rights have been crushed and everything you ask them where is palestine people will be clueless trust me i am not kidding i am not uh, lowering you know i am not running down people but most people don't have a clue about what they are talking they just mouth the what um, newspapers what you know tv shows talk about that's about it you know um palestine comprises three parts two parts actually one is the west bank this is the west bank this is about 5500 square kilometers 5500 square kilometers population is about 3.5 million 35 lakhs or so it's a densely populated place okay number two is gaza or called gaza strip gaza strip this is 365 square kilometers this is gaza strip very 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 small about close to 2 million that is 20 lakh people reside here which makes it one of the world's most densely populated territories the west bank is run by palestinian authority pa palestinian authority the gaza strip is controlled by hamas which in many countries is banned because of its terrorist activities 
this you see here is all Israel. I'm all Israel. Israel was a country established in 1948 as a land of Jews. Jews practice the religion of Judaism. Muslims practice Islam. Jews practice Judaism. Okay. Now, it is about 20,770 square kilometers. Population is about 92 lakh. I just wanted you to know this. Nothing more. The conflict is of land, territory. Israel wasn't here till it became a reality in 1948. When Jews from all over the world came to this place in 1940s, in the late 1940s, migration of Jews happened from different parts of the world. Jews historically have been persecuted by Christians and Muslims. Look, I am discussing history as it happening, happened. I have no views on this. I don't take sides. <laughs> Palestine, Israel, they are fighting. Let them fight. Why should it bother us? We are students of learning. For us, it's only another conflict. Yeah, like the Tigray conflict in Ethiopia or, you know, the Afghan Taliban conflict. Why does it matter? It's for them to resolve this. Don't get emotional about such things. Trust me. No one cares about you. Honestly. So, the Jews were, the Jews have always been, for whatever reason, I will not get into this, they have been persecuted by Christians and Muslims. India is the only country in the world and this is something the government of Israel will tell you, hardcore Jews will tell you, that India is the only country where Jews have never been persecuted, discriminated against. Never. We don't usually. Yeah. So when Hitler started his um, policy of anti-Semitism, anti-Jews, anti-Semitism, Hitler was an anti-Semite, which means anti-Jew, anti-Jew. Hitler targeted Jews. Hitler was the ruler of Germany between 1933 and 1945, till his suicide in 1945. You know, in this period, he is estimated to have killed about 61 lakh Jews. I'll give you more details in the next session, how, what happened, everything. So to escape such persecution by Hitler, and other Nazis and by other governments around the world, other societies around the world, Jews began to come into this place. In 1948, they occupied some, they had occupied some parts here. Okay, I'll show you a map next time also, a different kind of map. They occupied these areas and the Muslims said, hey guys, what are you doing man, this is our territory. I'll speak in a light-hearted way, okay? It's a very complex, sad topic. Sad in the sense that it's all about violence. I mean, people are crazy. So, the Palestinian Muslims say, this is our homeland. It has been our homeland for ever since Islam was born. In 622 AD, that's about 1400 years. Well, the Jews said, look guys, we understand this has been your homeland, but Judaism is older than Christianity and Islam. Judaism was born about 3,000 3, years back and such, this is our homeland. This is the homeland promised in our holy books, in our holy books, okay? So. You may claim this is this to be your homeland, but originally this is ours. We moved out for a long time and you took over it. That's about it. But so we have come back to this place. So historically it's ours. 
This has been described as the land of milk and honey in our scriptures. So this is ours. So in 1948 they went to war. But before that you remember this story. The wars in the next class. Okay. Israel and Palestine. So this is the West Bank. Now why it's called West Bank? There is a river here called Jordan. This is the river Jordan. As you see from here, on the west bank, bank, river bank, on the west bank of the river Jordan, you find a settlement of Palestinians. Hence, this area is called West Bank. Okay. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the Dead Sea. This is the Dead Sea. Okay. In 1967, Israel and Muslim countries ganged up, fought. I'll just bring the back that, bring that back. But look at this map. This area was a, it belongs to Syria, but under Israeli occupation now. It's a tiny country. It has shaken up the world. In the next class, I'll tell you more about what are the goals of Hamas, Israel, and all these things, and what are the wars about. Okay. So basic details. This is Palestine. You see on the right, that's Israel. Hmm? So, lot to learn, my friends. We need to learn to build a better future for ourselves. A future that will help us live prosperous, secure lives. Hmm? Prime Minister Narendra Modi recently laid the foundation store of the WHO Global Center for Traditional Medicine in Jamnagar, Gujarat, whom the following dignitaries attended the event. Uh, one and two. Ah, who are these guys? You know, Guterres is the Secretary General of the UN, United Nations Organization. This guy is the Director General of the World Health Organization. This guy is the Prime Minister of Mauritius. That's it. Simple. Hmm? Hmm. Chaliye. What is loan to value ratio? It's a self-explanatory loan to value ratio. Amount approved as a percentage of value of asset offered as security. Let's say I I go to bank. I put this gold as loan. Okay, this gold. Take it as gold. Okay. Um, I put this as gold as loan. The guy would check the gold ornaments value and everything. And let's say he says it is worth uh, four point five lakh rupees. Will he give me the entire value of the loan, you know, the, the, the security in loan? No. He will typically give me about 80% of that, 75 to 80%. That 75 to 80% is what is called loan to value. What's the value? Let's say four and a half lakh rupees. How much are you giving me? About 80% of that amount. 90,000 minus 4.5 lakh. That 90,000 is used as a margin thing. What if the price of gold goes down? The guy might lose out now. What if you make you default? So everything is accounted for risk associated with the default, a fall in the price of gold, all that stuff. So in all, it's a basic way of looking at things. If someone keeps a property with you, would you give the entire property value in loan? No, you would keep some portion with you as security, as security. That amount approved as a percentage of value of asset offered as security. Yeah, that's it. What is the role of business correspondence is envisaged by the Reserve Bank of India? I think it's, let's see, the banks cannot be there everywhere because establishing a bank branch is very expensive. Running people, land establishment costs, you know, fans, all that, these are all establishment costs. Yeah, see, I'm seated here in this room. There are two ACs, two ACs, three boards. Yeah, one large board, two boards here, one green board, one white board, one large white board. Yeah, there are two computers there. It's expensive. There are about, um, you know, there are about 22 tube lights here. So you need to understand that these things matter a lot. Okay, expenses. So instead of that, the government says, the, the bank says, Are, if I put visa here, not much will come out of it. So instead I can have, you know, uh, instead of establishing a branch for in each village, I can have one banking correspondent for X number of villages. 
this guy will go around collecting deposits and in case someone needs money and everything he'll bring in an application we will see if we can scrutinize you know and then issue what we say issue um, the loan yeah so primary urban cooperative urban you know are permitted uh, UCBs are permitted to contribute to the rural infrastructure development fund amounts short for all those funds that are that represent shortfall in priority sector lending ridf is maintained by nabad i think we discussed this a while ago so we will not go back to this um, particular thing um nhb is national housing board or national housing bank it's run by sharda kumar hota sharda kumar hota mudra micro units development and refinancing agency micro units development and refinancing agency hmm? you know under this there are three kinds of loans under mudra there are three kinds of loans um sishu loan up to fifty thousand rupees sishu SHA SHA Shishu is a kid, yeah. Then what is that? Kishore, uh, between fifty thousand to five hundred thousand. That is five lakh rupees. Okay. Um, Tarun, Tarun, five hundred lakh. Oh, sorry, five hundred lakh thousand to thousand k. That is ten lakh rupees. So a loan up to fifty thousand rupees would be called Shishu loan. Kishore loan for an amount between 50,000 and 5 lakh. For 5 lakh to 10 lakh is Tarun loan. Tarun loan. Okay. Yeah. Samya Suluhu Hassan has been renamed at the has been sorry has been named the 2022 winner of the Africa Road Builders Babakar Di Trophy. Suluhu is the president of Tanzania. Yes, okay, what were the choices? She became the president only after the previous guy died. To complete a remainder of the term, she bring in, she brought, you know, she she came in. Angola, uh, Angola president is Joe Lorenko. Lorenko. Hmm? Capital, if you want, no, not here. Too many. Okay, only in this case, since I mentioned it, capital Luanda. Currency, chala koi baat nahi. Currency, Kwanja. Only in this case, I will give you this information. Zambia, the president is, what's his name here? Hakainde Hichilima. Yeah, yeah. Hakainde Hichilima. South Africa, I think in the previous class we mentioned his name, Cyril Ramaphosa. Zimbabwe, Emerson Mangangwa. Emerson Emerson Mangangwa. Hmm. Okay. Oh, guys, that's about it. Thanks for me, Bharat Si Jain. Have a lot of fun. Thanks for being here. As I mentioned, I'll continue the Palestine Israel story from where you know where I left it. You know, left today. Thank you for being here. Have a lot of fun. Stay curious.